Okay, so now we've looked at second order homogeneous differential equations. If the characteristic equation has two real solutions or two complex solutions. But what happens if there's only one real solution? Remember from algebra that a differential equation can be solved using a lot of different methods, but we'll just use this one. This is called the quadratic formula. And let's notice um, this piece right here, the stuff under the square root, that's called the discriminant. And if the discriminant is positive, we get two real solutions. Because once you work out the numerical value of this thing, take its square root, you can have a number here. You're going to take negative b, and you're going to add that number, and you're going to subtract that number. So you get two distinct real solutions. If b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, then you're still going to have to work out what that number is, but it's going to be a complex number. When you take the square root of a negative number, right, this, if this thing here is negative, take the square root of that, you're taking the square root of a negative number, so that'll be a complex number, but then you're still going to have to add and subtract it from negative b. So you'll have two complex solutions. So, so far we've talked about what happens when the discriminant is greater than zero and when it's less than zero, but what about when it's equal to zero? That's the only option left. If the discriminant here, if the thing inside the square root is zero, when you take the square root of it, you're going to get zero. So you'll have negative b plus zero and negative b minus zero over 2a. Well, that's still two solutions, but it's the same number. So you get what we call one real solution with multiplicity two. So technically speaking, there are two solutions here, but they're the same number. We've dealt with this, we dealt with this situation in uh, two videos ago, two lessons ago, and we dealt with this one in the previous set of videos or the previous video. Did I make one video or two? I can't remember. But this was the last lesson and this was the one before it. So in this lesson, what we're gonna be dealing with is what happens when we only have one distinct solution, when we've only got one number for our R value. Let's start by looking at this second order homogeneous differential equation. And we have constant coefficients. Um, and with the strategy we know for dealing with these will work at least at the beginning. So we can take our first step here. Recall that what we're looking for is solutions of this form. And what we do here is create a characteristic equation from the differential equation which we can solve either by the quadratic formula or by factoring. Because it's a quadratic equation, it will have two solutions. The question is, will it have two real solutions? Will it have two complex solution? Or will it have one solution with multiplicity two? And I hope you've figured out that we're gonna want one of the last type because that is where we are in the course at this point. So in fact, here it is. We have r equals three and r equals three or r equals three, right? We don't need to write it twice. That is the only solution for this differential equation or for the characteristic equation. What that means to the differential equation is that y1 equals e to the three t. Well, that's great, but what's y2? We can't just say that it's another e to the three t because if we do that, then what we're saying is that two solutions which are just multiples of each other. This is one times the other solution. And we're gonna end up with this, if we look for the Ronskian for this, we're gonna end up with a zero Ronskian, which means that we haven't found uh, independent solutions. And these two solutions don't form a foundational set. If, you're, if you've taken linear algebra, the, the, the analog here, the equivalent is to say that these are two vectors, but one is just a uh, multiple of the other. They're not independent. So they don't span R2, even though there are two vectors, they only span R1.
So don't worry if that doesn't make sense or if you haven't taken linear algebra. That's just to help those who have taken it put this in a little bit of a different context. What we've done in the past is we've said, let's let y1 c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2 be our y. So that tells me that y then would be c1 e to the 3t plus c2 e to the 3t, but we can't do that, right? This is the problem. We don't, we have two solutions here, but they're really the same thing. So we can't use this, this technique from this point on. What we can do is really only a slight modification though. Let's erase this c2 and let's replace it not with a constant, but with a function. Now what happens is that I have one solution sort of represented here and another solution sort of represented here and they're different because instead of just having uh instead of having being just a multiple of each other this some function times the solution changes that solution su sufficiently that it's no longer just a multiple of the other and before we go too far down that road let me just point out that what we're going to be working with here are y1 and y2 not this form of the combined equations, not at this point. Now we can, oh, I forgot my three there. I've got an R there and I should have a three. I can verify that this is a solution simply by saying that it, we're showing that it meets the criteria that Y double prime, which will be well, let's start with y prime. That's going to be 3 e to the 3t plus 9 times y, which is e to the 3t. And y double prime then would be 3 times, that's a, that's a times right there, 3 times this first derivative, or 9 times e to the 3t. And I have 9 e to the 3t plus 9 e to the 3t, that's 18 e to the 3t, minus 18 e to the 3t. That is in fact zero, so this satisfies our differential equation, which is great. Um, but we need to know something about this now. We, in order to figure out what this function might be, we need to do the same thing. We need to run the same test here. We need to know that y2 double prime minus six times y2 prime plus nine times y2 equals zero. And in fact, in this case, because this function is unknown to us, we're going to set it equal to zero, plug our function in, all of our, our derivatives and whatnot in, and, and force it to equal to zero to, to, zero to find out what, what v is. So <clears throat> what do I need to do to figure out what y sub 2's derivatives are? I'm going to move this up a little bit. So I can take y 2's first derivative. Now, I'm going to abbreviate at this point. Instead of saying v of t every time, I'm just going to call it v. Well, this is a product. So I need to use the product rule. The product rule says the derivative of a product is the first factor times the derivative of the second. That's going to be 3e e to the 3t plus the second e to the 3t times the derivative of the first, which is v prime. Let me tidy that up. 3v e to the 3t plus v prime e to the 3t. Now I need v2's second derivative. That is going to be, let me use a highlighter here, I have another product, I have a product here as well, <clears throat> I'm just highlighting the different factors in that product, in those products, so we can identify them. And then I'm going to take those derivatives. So the derivative of the first term, this term here is the derivative of a, derivative of a product. That's the first times the derivative of the second, which is 3e e to the 3t, plus the second e to the 3t times the derivative of the first, which is v prime. I should point out here that we are taking the derivatives of functions called v and functions with t in them. v is a function of t. Right, v is a function of t, so when I take the derivative of a known function of t, I can do that directly. 
But if I don't know what the function is, when I take its derivative, I have to just represent it as v prime, or I could write dv dt if I wanted to. Um, but this is a function of t, so when I differentiate with respect to t, I'm just getting v prime. So that's my first term there. My second term, I'll do this one in yellow, the derivative of that is also uh, the derivative of a product. So I get the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. It's already a derivative, so I take a second derivative. So my y double prime is 9v e to the 3t. These two terms are, these are like terms here. I have e to the 3t times b prime, and I have 3e to the 3t times b prime. So I have a total of 1 plus 3v prime e to the 3t. And then, of course, I have plus v double prime, and I've run out of room. Uh, e to the 3t, boy, that's really bad. I used to have a bigger iPad, and I, I, I'm just not used to working on such a small space. That's going to be my excuse anyway. I'm going to see if I can scooch some of this over a little bit. Okay, I mostly failed in my moving, so I've rewritten quite a bit of this. This was my first, this, the first derivative's derivative of the first term was a product, and that is in white there. The second term of that, uh, that expression was, is this term right here, the derivative of that is in yellow. And when I simplify it and tidy it up, I get this. I've just noticed an error. I, I have, um, let's see, I'll highlight them so you can see what I'm doing here. This second term here and this third term here do combine. I have uh, some v prime e to the 3 t's and some more v prime e to the 3 t's. But I missed this three, so when I added them together, I came up with four. But there are actually six of them. So let me change that real quick should be 6 v prime e to the 3t. So now I have my first derivative. It's right here, my y prime and my y double prime. My second derivative is right here. And I'm going to use those now, and I'm going to plug them into this equation here. y double prime, I'll put this in parentheses, is, y, is 9 v e to the 3t plus 6 v prime e to the 3t plus v double prime e to the 3t. And from that, I need to subtract six copies of y prime, which is 3v e to the 3t plus v prime e to the 3t. And then I'm going to add nine copies of y. And look at that. There's another typo. This superscript of the two here should actually be a subscript. So let me change that. I bet you caught that as I was doing it. Uh, I need to not add nine copies of y. So, yeah, nine copies of y. So where is, where is y? y is this thing right here. So v e to the 3t. And that has to equal zero. So now let's add, let's combine these. I have 9v e to the 3t plus 6v prime e to the 3t plus v double prime e to the 3t. Distributing my negative 6, I get minus 18 v e to the 3t minus 6 v prime e to the 3t plus 9 v e to the 3t equals 0. Now I could have worked through this by factoring that 3 e to the 3t out earlier, um, but I sort of didn't notice until I was saying these all out loud that every single one of those has an e to the 3t in it. Shouldn't come as a surprise. Let's go ahead and factor it out now. I have e to the 3t times 9v plus 6v prime plus v double prime minus 18v minus 6v prime plus 9v that still equals zero. And I can combine some of the terms in this. I can put all my v prime terms together. 
Let's rewrite the e to the 3t, and then all my v prime, v double prime, well, I only have one. I only have this term that has a double prime in it. Let's look for our single prime terms. There's one there, there's one there. Oh, they add up to zero. So that's nice. So I have plus zero here. And then for my non-differentiated terms, I have this 9 plus this 9. That makes 18, and subtract 18, and I get another 0. So actually, I don't even need these parentheses. I have et, e to the 3t, times v double prime. And that still has to equal 0. Now I could write that differently. I could write it as v double prime e to the 3t equals 0, but it doesn't really matter because this can never be 0, right? e to the 3t can never be 0. And so that implies that v double prime equals 0. Well, that's kind of nice because if v double prime equals 0, then v prime, which is just the integral of v double prime with respect to t, that's just going to be some constant. And v, which is the function I'm looking for, is the integral of that, which is c1 times t plus another constant. Can I squeeze it in there? Well, I think I cut it off, but I can see the whole two, but I'll bet you can't. Um, let me see if I can move it over a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to move it all. There we go. Plus c2. All right. So what does that tell me then? Well, what it tells me is that my y2 is y2 is equal to v, which I now know to be c1t plus c2 times e to the 3t. And that is c1t e to the 3t plus c2 just e to the 3t. And if you look at this, I hope that you will see what we have here is our y1 equation, right? Remember that what we normally do with these is we say y is equal to a constant, I'm going to call it k1, a constant times y1 plus a constant, a different constant, times y2. Let me write it that way. Instead of that specific function, because it doesn't always work, right? It doesn't work in the case where the, the two functions are actually the same. So uh, what I'm trying to get at down here is that this k1, y1, that's right here. Okay, I've called my constant constant 2 instead of constant 1, but that's, a, that's okay. It's just some unidentified constant value. So here's my c1, y1, and here's my c1, y2, where y2, it turns out, is actually here. And so I don't actually need to do this step because having found v, I've incorporated that in. There's my y1 right there. I've incorporated it by finding the function v down here. So I'm going to highlight that. This is my general solution. Now this only works for second order homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. Well, that's not a true statement. What we've done here on this screen is for uh, equations with constant coefficients. What happens if these are functions instead of constants? Well, I'm going to go to the next screen and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But one of the things you'll need to know about problems of that nature is that you'll need to be given one of the solutions, right? You'll need to be given y1 in order to be able to find a second solution. We talked about these on the previous screen, screen where p of t and q of t were just constants. We were able to take the, use the strategy that we learned in a previous video and write down the characteristic equation, solve that, and just replace the, the r in our solution y equals e to the rt with the r value from the characteristic equation. But we don't know how to solve these equations yet at all. If p of t and q of t are non-constant functions, then we don't have the tools that we need to solve these. So in order to be able to do anything with them, I'm going to have to give you a function y1 of t. I have to give you some function so that 
you can take it and use it to find a second solution. The strategy at that point is very much the same. We say y is equal to some function of t times that first function. Well, once we have a y, once we have a, a proposed solution, we need to find y prime, which is the derivative of a product, the first v times the derivative of the second, plus the second y1 times the derivative of the first, and a y double prime, which is the derivative of one product plus the derivative of a second product. Then we're going to take this y prime, this version of y prime, and replace y prime, sorry, y double prime with it in the original differential equation. And we're going to take this version of y prime and replace y prime with it in this original version of the differential equation. And we'll get something that looks like this. y double prime plus p of t, let's just write it as p, times y prime plus q times y, which is v times y1 equals 0. Distribution of my p and my q give me this equation. And if I combine like terms, I get v double prime y plus y prime v prime twice plus p y v prime plus v y double prime plus p v y prime plus q v y. Those are the v terms. No derivative has been taken. And that's still equal to zero. Now I'm going to take the, the v terms out. I'm going to factor them out of their respective sequences of terms. I get v double prime y plus v single prime times 2y prime plus py. And just v, when factored out of these last two, last three terms, gives me y1, y double prime plus py prime plus qy. And that's still equal to zero. And let's take a a moment now. This Remember this is a general case. We worked on a problem before where p and q were constants. We found a single solution kind of by some educated guesswork and we've been working with the idea that solutions of equations that look like this um, look like y equals e to the rt. And so we've taken, uh, taken the idea that a known solution when multiplied by some other function might produce a second solution um, but looking at the original differential equation, I have y double prime plus p y prime plus q y, and that's equal to zero. Well, down here I have y double prime plus p y prime plus q y. So this whole thing right here has to equal zero. This f factor here is equal to zero because we started with that assumption. We started with the, this homogeneous equation. We said move everything to the left if we needed to. And when you do that, if it looks like this and it's equal to zero, then this whole thing is equal to zero. Well, that's what this is for a particular, albeit unknown, solution. So this whole term now is zero, and I'm left with v double prime y plus v prime times 2y prime plus py equals zero. Now we're at the stage where we could say, Let's assume that v prime is some function that occurs because we've taken the derivative of some other function. So we're essentially going to say, let's let u equal v prime, then u prime will equal, I wrote, I said prime and I wrote double prime. I was getting ahead of myself there. u equals v prime, u prime equals v double prime. That lets me rewrite this as u prime y plus u times 2y 
plus p, sorry, 2y prime plus py equals 0. And that is a first order differential equation. It's important to note that what we've done here is we've started with an assumption that some function, some solution, some function y of t is equal to some other combination of functions of t, one that we know and one that we're looking for. And then we've taken first and second derivatives of this first, so first solution, our, our uh, assumed or presumed solution, taken the first and second derivatives, plugged it in, and then in the critical step here, where am I? I think it happens about here. Yes, it's in this step right here. I'll do this in pink. I've factored out the first, second, and the zeroth first, second derivatives of a function, but not of y. Not the function we're looking for here is v. So although I know a solution in terms of you know y in terms of t, and I'm proposing another solution that's y in terms of functions of t, I'm actually looking for the function v, and so I'm going to use some algebraic sleight of hand, as it were, it's not really sleight of hand, it's legitimate algebra, to rearrange things so that v is my, the focus of my attention. And that's really the, the, the kicker. I mean, that's really the point of this thing. This method is called the reduction of order. Can't spell today. Reduction of order. Because we have essentially reduced the problem from one of being a second order differential equation to one of being a first order differential equation. And this we know how to deal with. Let's do an example on the next screen. I've chosen this example for a couple of reasons. One of them is that it's not in the form that we're used to seeing a second order differential equation. There's a function in front of the y double prime term. We're used to seeing functions or we're used to seeing differential equations that start like this, right? So it turns out that because I'm going to give you the first solution, here's my, my y1, we can absolutely do this problem in this form. We don't necessarily need to solve it for y double prime first. However, just so that you know, um, it is also possible to start this problem by dividing both sides by 2t squared. And that would give you y double prime plus 1 half, I have to be careful with that, 1 half, let's see, that's going to be t to the negative 1 y prime, minus 3 halves t to the negative 2 y equals 0. And now it's in the, the form that we're, we're used to. But it's also a lot messier. I've got fractional coefficients and things are just not as, as tidy. So since I've given you the first uh, solution, I think I'm going to stick to this form. And you'll see as we work through this one that it, it turns out we don't need to, to reduce this to a, a coefficient of 1 in the first term. So since I know y1, I can make the assumption, in fact I'll write it that way, that the solution is y equals v of t times y1 of t, which in this case is going to be v times t to the negative 1. And as before, I'm abbreviating v of t just as v, but v is a function of t. All right, now that I have my y set down, I can go about figuring out what y prime is. That's going to be the derivative of this product. So I have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And that's negative v t to the negative 2 plus v prime t to the negative 1. y double prime will be the derivative of this sum. So the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. So each one of these is going to be differentiated separately each term, but each term is also a product. So I'll be using the product rule again there. I have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. 
And then for the second term, I have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is already a derivative, so it, it gets a second derivative. And let's tidy that up. I get 2vt to the negative 3 minus v prime t to the negative 2 twice, actually, right? There's a minus v prime t to the negative 2 here, and there's a minus v prime t to the negative 2 here, so that's actually 2 v prime t to the negative 2. And then I also have a v double prime t to the negative 1. I usually write these in descending order. I'm not sure why I wrote this one in ascending order of differentiation, but there you have it. Um, so now I have a y. There's my y. Sorry, wrong color highlighter there. So there's my y. Here is my y prime. And here is my y double prime. All right, so now that I have all of these, I can replace y double prime, y prime, and y in this original differential, differential equation. So I'm going to have 2t squared times y prime, where y prime is 2v t to the negative 3 minus 2v prime t to the negative 2 plus v double prime t to the negative 1 plus t times v prime, where v prime is negative v t to the negative 2, negative 2, plus v prime t to the negative 1. And then I have plus, where am I? <laughs> Lost my place. Minus, minus 3 times y, where y is v t to the negative 1. And that still has to equal 0. I'll do some distribution. I get 4 v t to the negative 1 minus 4 v prime t to the 0 plus 2 v double prime times t. And that, that one's going to be a minus v times t to the negative 1 plus v prime times t to the 0 minus 3v t to the negative 1. My next step is going to be to collect like terms. So there's my v double prime. This is the point at which you're switching from focusing on y to focusing on v's or from focusing on t, which is the variable uh, the independent variable, to focusing on v's. Uh, so there's my double prime term, and I my single prime terms are here and here, and my no prime terms, or my no derivative terms, are here and here and here. So let's capture these. I have v double prime times 2t plus v prime times, let's see, I have a negative 4, and a minus 1. Nope, I'm com combining the wrong things there. A negative yellow, negative 4 and plus 1. And then v, and I'm on my green terms, I'm going to have a 4 t to the negative 1 minus t to the negative 1 minus 3 t to the negative 1. And lo and behold, this one adds up to 0. So that goes away. This combines to negative 3, so at this point I have 2 v prime, sorry, v double prime, t, minus 3 v prime equals 0. Or I could think of this as 2 v double prime t equals 3 v prime. Now because I have a first derivative and a second derivative, but no v, no zeroth derivative. This is considered a reduction in order, reduction of order problem. That's what makes it a reduction of order problem. I can assume, as I've been doing before, that since v prime, since the derivative of a function is a function, I can just call that function u. 
I can leave it as V prime, but it's easier to think of. It's easier to go through the, the next step. It's easier to integrate both sides if, you, if you're working only with a single variable. So it's just kind of a, a, an, um, an aid to uh, taking the next step in the process. If u is equal to V prime, then u prime is what's equal to V double prime. And I'm going to rewrite this now as du dt. Essentially, I've just moved this u prime up to here. Um, I'm going to, oh gosh, I'll just write it out. Uh, to, this is the stuff where I, I keep telling students, write out all your steps so that your reader will understand where you're coming from and where you're going. So it's not a bad thing for me to model that. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so I get that. I'm going to divide both sides by u. And I'm going to divide both sides by t. And then I'll multiply both sides by dt. So I have du over u equals 3 halves dt over t, which of course you can write as 1 over t dt, 1 over u du, or 1 over t dt. Integrating both sides, I get the natural log of u equals 3 halves times the natural log of t plus a constant. And then we'll exponentiate both sides, basically making each side the exponent on e. That gives me u equals, I'm also going to raise, I'm going to move my 3 halves, right? I'm going to take that and put it here. I can do that. I'm also, I'm running out of room again. So I'm also going to change the form that this expression is in. This right hand side is going to be equal to e to the ln of t to the 3 halves times e to the c. And this is a constant. So that, that, that lets me write that up here as u equals t to the 3 halves times some constant. I will call it k. I'm not sure why. I'm going to move it over. k times t to the 3 halves. Okay, great. Well, I found u, but u is not what I was looking for. I was looking for v, but that's okay because way down here at the bottom left-hand corner, we said that u was just equal to v prime. So what I've essentially found, by finding u, I've essentially found v prime. So all I need to do now is integrate again with respect to t. Remember that u is a function of t because v is a function of t. We take the integral of t to the 3 halves dt, and I get from this I get v, this is equal to v, equals k times t to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves, or times 2 fifths, plus a constant. And that is, to all intents and purposes, my solution, or my v. I haven't found the, I haven't found the second solution yet, but I have found the function v that I need to use. But remember that what we're looking for here is a function that will do this job. A function with any constant here and any constant here will do the do the work we need it to do. So let's choose it. Let's choose k and c so that v ends up equaling t to the 5 halves. That just means that k has to be 5 halves and c has to be 0. So now we have a function v, v of t. I'm going to go up in the top right hand corner because I've run out of room everywhere else. v of t is simply t to the 5 halves. And the second solution that I was looking for, y sub 2 of t, since uh, y is v times t to the negative 1, I have v 
times t to the negative 1. So y sub 2 is t to the 3 halves. Now, sometimes you will be asked for a second solution. And sometimes you will be asked for the general solution. So depending on what you're asked for, this might be the answer. Or y equals c1 t to the negative 1 plus c2 t to the 3 halves might be the answer. If you're asked for, you're given a single solution, if you're given a first solution and you're asked for a second solution, this is your answer. But if you're given a first solution and you're asked for a general solution, this is your answer.